What's going on, everybody? I'm here to tell you about the Insane Clown Posse. They are a band that I've been following for, I'm going to say, 96, 97, so coming on like 22 years now. And I've seen them in concert probably, I'd say, 10 times with the Dark Lotus and all those other ones on the side times and the solo things. And uh, they're a band that uh, a lot of people don't like. Uh, you really don't ever hear anybody ever say good comments about it. Um, either you're like a real, real fan or you straight up hate them. That's pretty much how, how it goes these days. Um, a lot of people say that they get hate because they wear a hatchet man or stuff like that. But till recently, uh, at the time, well, a few months ago, my dad thought he was going to sell my truck. So he took off all my stickers on the truck. Uh, when we went to, we went to a concert, actually it might have been the ICP concert, one of those concerts that we went to in Albuquerque, I left my truck over there because we had to do something to it, and so I just left it over there for the weekend, I come back and he had cleaned it out and all my stickers were gone. So I had that sticker, I know, on my truck for at least five years, never once got pulled over. I'm not like trying to say I wanted to be pulled over. Never once got pulled over, never got judged by it, never, you know, people might have fucking honked or said something. I don't know how many people I told when I said look for my truck, I told them look for the truck with the hatchet man on the tailgate. It was perfectly on the tailgate. And what's funny is even my red truck, my dad took off all the stickers right then uh, when we sold it. So... A lot of people get hate and say that they get judged or hated on, but I never really have. I used to work at a supermarket, and a lot of people used to think I was the male prostitute, maybe. But other than that, I've never had anybody really say anything bad about the Juggalo stuff. Um, every girlfriend I've had, I really had to either like talk them into going, or Roxy wasn't really that hard into talking to going. Um, first one she went to go see was the Riddle Box 20 year tour um, but yeah I used to pick out for my girlfriend Vanessa I used to pick out t-shirts and be like don't wear you know she used to have girly girl stuff and I'd be like don't wear that because it's going to get ruined or people are going to you know just I don't know you're going to look like the weird one out or something so how I first came across ICP my cousin Brad had bought this CD and he came up to me and he was like, man, I bought this CD for this one song. I listened to it a million times and I'm done. Like, I really don't, I don't think I like this band. But this is like right down your alley. I think you would like these guys. And he gave me the spew on the whole, you know, what he knew about ICP at the time. Which, come to show, they had like a whole, you know, empire once we found out stuff. If, if a kid was to get an ICP right now and know that you got 30 brand new CDs to listen to of like all new music It'd be fucking bl mind blowing you don't ever run into a band or an artist that got 30 CDs just like right there like if you got on Spotify right now it'd be a little bit hard to find some of that stuff but 30 CDs damn like you would have a heyday and you know now each one of those 30 CDs probably 25 of them worth I remember what I was doing or what was going on in my life or what was going down, who I was dating, where I was living, you know, when I saw them that time or so I'm just right now I'm only going to do three in case this gets too long and then if it does we'll go for more. But I wanted to bring up around when I remember the first time hearing ICP. And so my cousin Brad gave me that CD and he just left it in my car and the riddle box, which I wish I'd have bought some because I got something around here that would show you what the riddle box looks like. And um, just the album cover just looks so appealing. Like it just looked like something, you know, something was, you know, with this band. Just the, and I've always wanted to get a riddle box tattoo. That was going to be the first one. I got the Hatchet Man. Oh, I hope I went, I went wrong arm. I got the Hatchet Man as my first tattoo, which I thought it was going to be the Riddle Box. But, uh, you know, 
I think that maybe have been a little bit easier than first tattoos. I didn't want to go all out and be like puss out or something happened. So I got a little tattoo. So just the album cover just was so made you wonder like what's up. And then to hear the first few songs, just mind blowing. I remember my friend David was obsessed with the, I, I guess it would be called the Riddle Box song, but it's a whole bunch of toys that are taken over and you know, I remember that was just, it just seemed so weird. Like, it didn't seem like no CD or anything that had came out at the time. And I really, it really pulled me into it. So, I remember bumping that, and then around that time, I guess, The Great Malenko had either came out, or, I guess I would say it had already been coming, I had already been out. I'm not, I'm not looking up dates or anything, but I'm pretty sure it had to have been out by then. So after, you know, we got into that, I remember the great Malenko, we had drove down, and Dave had already had it. My friend Dave moved to Amarillo, and he had already had the CD, or his brother had the CD, and he was like, oh dude, you got you know, if you like that one, you got to hear this, there's some funny shit they're saying on this, blah, blah, this. So we went down to Amarillo. And it was just me and him, I believe, maybe, maybe I think Ryan went on the next trip. But I know it was uh, me, him, and his brother. I had the Hastings was down the street, and I bought the Great Malenko. And then I remember thinking, like, which color should I get? Because they had it in, like, different colors and different, you know. And that, after that, I remember the, I think it's the Joker's Wild or well, something like that. I remember... Davis being like, this is the funniest shit I've ever heard, and uh, it was mind blowing. Like it was pretty crazy. Our next trip um, down there was when we got to actually see ICP, and that's when um, I was watching wrestling one night, and they bought a ICP had been working for WWE, and they would been switching back and forth. You know, instead of paying us, we're going to do, you know, commercials during your wrestling because, you know, millions of people are watching this stuff. So we'll get the word out on our stuff. So I'd seen that they were going to Amarillo. And I, I don't know how I didn't wake up my parents that night. Wrestling came on pretty late at that time. So I don't know how I called Dave and told him because it'd be an hour later in Amarillo, so it'd have been like even 10, 30, 11 when I'd seen this, but I remember the same exact spot I was in when I seen the dates roll up, and they said July 31st, 1999, and they said they were going to be in Amarillo, Texas at the Amarillo Civic Center, and I, I was hyped, because all the stuff had just came out, and then coming up to this, I believe, I, I still got to remember the first time that I heard the Amazing Jekyll Brothers, but um, I was mind blown, like everything that came up to then, I was, I was pumped that we were going to actually get to see this live, because I think I had a bootleg tape that I bought from someplace in Lubbock, and it was just pretty much a person that had recorded an ICP concert and put it on a blank tape, and they were selling it for that time at 20 bucks. No one would pay 20 bucks for that, because they could just... I've seen that same thing on YouTube now. Um, I'm trying to remember what tour. I remember it was in Detroit, I believe. But uh, it's probably in my box of all kinds of stuff. So, going to see that, me and Ryan rode down there. And I. Okay, so Dave's mom got married that day. So that's why Dave was down here. And so, right after. We didn't even go to the party afterwards. Right when we got out of there. We hopped on a bus, rode a, a Greyhound that took like three hours to drive a two-hour trip, and then got there, hung out at his dad's house for a little bit, and then his mom, his stepmom, took us to the concert. And as we're pulling up to this concert, she was like, if you were my kids, there's no way, no way that you'd go this, even though her dumbass son a month of, or a few months beforehand was buying us the Great Malenko because that was when you couldn't buy... Uh, parental advisory CDs. So we went to it. I remember Cold Chamber had gotten into a fight with ICP about the merchandise sales or something like that. So they straight left the tour 
a whole bunch of drama happened on that on the Howard Stern show. Um, beforehand, the, the Misfits were supposed to play, so that looks like it seemed like a whole bunch of bands were supposed to come off. I don't know if it was someone from the Misfits or something like that. Um, the Big Money Hustlers thing had just came out, so I think maybe it had something to do with that. Maybe they were touring with that because they were on the Big Money Hustlers movie. Um, but Cold Chamber bounced off, Biohazard was there, Twisted bounced off, and they just said that they were sick. And then I remember I see in there, I think there was somebody, oh, Mindless Self-Indulgence played there. And I had never seen a person that stopped in the middle of the show and said, this is the part of the song where I dropped my pants. And he just dropped his pants. It was weird. And then down the line, they're, they're like ICP, they have their own fan following of fans. So it was an interesting group of people because we wanted to see Cold Chamber and that stuff happen and we wanted to see Twisted and they said they were sick and that kind of threw me off at the beginning because Twisted was this upcoming band and the same day that I th maybe it was Bizarre and Bizarre came out Twisted put out their CD and that kind of made me feel like, you know, should I even give a shit about these guys? Which kind of now, you know, they're they're good dudes. But uh, at the time, I was like, these dudes just didn't show up to the concert that I wanted them to go to. Why the fuck, you know, why should I give them my 20 fucking dollars? Which CDs were like $15 then or something like that. So, ICP came out and they had the full stage on. They were throwing Fago. There, and it was everything that you'd want ICP to do. Shaggy came out in a Halloween costume that was just a big pumpkin. And then after that, after the first song, he just came out in his drawers and did the fucking the whole concert in his face paint and boxers. So that was crazy. And I'm trying to remember. I remember them uh, doing the Wicked Clown song. And they just had these big, the Hatchet Man, uh, big flag that's coming out. Wicked Clowns, Wicked Clowns. And so that was really intense. And then the Amazing Jekyll Brothers just came out. And these motherfuckers had merchandise like crazy. Like crazy. They had the Strangle Manias. They had t-shirts. They had jerseys. Which at the time I didn't have a jersey. My first jersey I can't believe was my Dark Lotus jersey. So right after we saw them in 2003. Somewhere around there. I got... Um, a uh, hockey jersey from them, but I, the first one I just got a white Wicked Clowns T-shirt, which I still own. So that would be fucking like 19 years old, and I still own that motherfucker. It's in, it's not in the greatest condition, and I haven't worn it in years. But every time I see it, it still puts me on a smile on my face and remembering that thing. I remember uh, I had gotten a few Fagos that day. And my mom had had someone come and clean the house, and they straight just thought it was a bottle of soda and threw that bitch away. I was, I was super bummed about that for a while. Um, so, this happened before the concert, but I just remembered this. The first time I hear, remember hearing the Amazing Jekyll Brothers was our friend Rudy had rolled up to Mike's house. And he was like, man, I just, I just literally left Hastings and bought this new ICP album, and I'm just, I'm not feeling it at all. And I was just like, you know, that's, that's where these dogging these things. I, you know, I thought this would be the shit. I heard it got fucking the ODB and then Snoop Dogg on it, and you know, it was weird for them to have pe other people on their albums. But you know, at the time they were trying to, you know, sell CDs. I guess so you got to put big names on there to get your thing. So. I remember being kind of bummed thinking that, you know, people weren't liking it because at the time I only knew four or five people that even liked ICP because this is before the internet and you could just find stuff or have some random email name or some shit that, you know, people knew who you were or knew what it was about. So, I'm trying to remember, that was the, the fifth Joker's card and I got lots of memories that I'll go through because I don't, you know... Um, but the sixth, I do really remember when Shangri-La came out. I remember driving down the street and Blam was on, and, like, it, it was the first time hearing it, but I already knew the words, because it was just, you know, it was so repetitive. But 
I just remember being excited, just driving down Rosewood Street, just like, bam, Fago, Fago, and just being really excited. Um, that coming up is was our second ICP concert. We saw ICP at the Sunshine, and this time we didn't, I wouldn't say got as much Fago as the first time. That first time, I had uh, a wife beater on, and it was just soaked with soda, just it just looked like I had poured soda on it pretty much and just left it out for a few days. And when I took it home, it was nasty. It just smelled like straight soda, which I just went to a concert in the last six, no, my last half year, year or so, and my jersey still smells like the goddamn diet, uh, diet root beer that they would soda on. I've washed it many, many times. And I don't know if that smells is going to be a permanent on there. I've washed it by itself with other stuff. Um, washed it with a whole bunch of dry cleaning sheets. I don't know what, but that jersey still smells like that uh, Fago root beer, diet root beer. So at the, the sixth one that we went to, it was, you know, it was a big thing. ICP had just changed their face paint around. Um, kind of brought a whole different sound. Um, they made it sound like, you know, they were kind of following God after all the, you know, uh, because the, the Shangri-La Hills Pit kind of thing. Um, when they made one seem like heaven, one seem like hell, which kind of with the names, you know. So, oh man, I skipped so much stuff that it's going to piss me off about this. So, I gotta go back to the whole Lubbock incident. Let me write that down and go back on the Lubbock. Um, so, we go see the sixth, uh, the Shangri La, and at that one, ooh man, damn it, I'm gonna piss myself that I can't remember who this was. Uh, I remember any booty filler was there, ABK. Um, oh, it's gonna piss me off that I can't remember this. But another really, really popular rap band from the 90s was opening that time. And it was me, Nick, Ryan, and Nick had brought uh, this one girl that he was trying to get in his, her vagina at the time. Tara, Tara. So they stayed in opposite hotels. Me and Ryan stayed, and that's even another story. I can't even put the full story on YouTube. Um, me and Ryan had a hell of a time in our hotel room partying, and then Nick was trying to get some. But, so, it was an awesome time. I remember driving up there, and there just being lines out the, out the door and down the street that we had to wait. People chanting, people going crazy, and motherfuckers had signs. It was pretty wild. Um... They had a full-on big, uh, not that they don't go, they ever go small, but they had a full-on big production for the Shangri-La, and it was it was an awesome show. I remember they that's when they were doing their face blue and white, and then the day that the Wraith came out, I believe the book came out of Violent J's book. Um, so, you know. That was cool to get to read this, and then the book ended pretty much, you know, they probably had to record some stuff and all that, but it pretty much ended at that point, so you got to read, you know, what's been going on through Violent J's life, while the six coming out, the next fucking one's Hell's Pit, but I'm going to pause you right there. So, when, after the Amarillo concert, there was a Lubbock concert, so, we go, and show up and ICP stuff there. The bus is out there, but they did not show up there. Later on, I think they said in the book that they were recording in Albuquerque from the next day over. And just Lubbock, Texas, that's why I want to make a story about Lubbock. They always get the bone. They always get the shitty end of the story. Something stupid happens when you're in Lubbock, Texas. I've almost, you know, got arrested for other people's bullshit. Jumping in, someone jumped in my car and I accidentally had my foot on the, or he put his foot on the gas when I turned on my car and, you know, almost got arrested from that. And then a lot of stupid stuff has happened in Lubbock, Texas. You know, 
I hope Logan, Texas brings as many good memories because I still go there for concerts. But we show up and they're not there. So they we're listening to the radio on the way home. We still went and did a few things. Maybe went and ate somewhere and went to the mall. That's when malls were popular. Um, I'm going to guess this was 2000. It was me, Ryan, and Large. We took the red truck. And so we go down there. All was pumped up, blah, blah, blah. And we go up there, and they fucking no-showed. So we come back. And they announced, you know, we're gonna, you know, we're gonna make it up to Lubbock. We're gonna do this on Valentine's Day. So <laughs> I asked off for that day on Valentine's Day. Told them I will not be there. Well, Sunday I worked the six something. They made you come in early. It might even been five. And so it was like five to two, somewhere around that area. Well, they made that schedule that night and wrote on the schedule. No one gets off Valentine's Day. Even though I've asked off for it two weeks ahead of time, multiple managers knew about it. But they didn't like me. They didn't like nobody there. They were, they were, that was a depressing place for, you know, it was a fun time because I was a kid, but, you know, those people, they lived that shit, so they weren't happy about life. So they wrote, no one gets Valentine's Day off. Well, I didn't see that. I just knew that I asked for Monday off, I was going to go in Tuesday morning or something like that before school or whatever was going on at the time and then, you know, see what time I had to go in that day because I knew it was going to be around 4 o'clock. So they scheduled me that night. So we're driving down there and we get a friend, uh, we get a call from a friend that worked at the Dragons Lair, Dave, and he says, yo, dude, they canceled again. And I was like, there's no way. No way. You're joking with us. Don't bullshit me. And he's like, no, dude. They straight up just called us and said, any of the tickets, just give them a refund. We're not going to deal with their, you know, BS again. So we were just like, damn. Like, what the fuck are we going to do? So I think we still went to Lubbock. I think we might even still went and checked out stuff. I got a picture, which I wish I would have pulled out, of, uh, of the actual concert, or of the actual thing. Let me pull out a book to show you how much of a... ICP fan I was. There they are right there. And then I can just see the things and know where it was. This was the actual when we showed up, that was the truck that was there. This is uh from the bazaar and bazaar. I actually wrestled, if you look in the middle, I wrestled and we went to uh, Arvin's house, and I wrestled my friend Nick, which I'll show you pictures of him. I, I got pictures of his ass getting beat. Um, and I dressed up as, I, I that one will be Violent J right there. All right, so I'm going to read this. In the, this was when I was a young, younger person, so it might be, you know, harder for me to... You know, I wasn't the brightest, I won't lie. When we went to see ICP, the Insane Clown Posse, my friend's mom got married, and when it was over, we took the first bus to Amarillo. I went with my friend Dave and Ryan. When we got there, we chilled at Dave's house for a few, and then loaded up the car and went to the show. When we got there, I was tripping out. I looked around, and everyone and their mom had clown love. They had the face paint on, which a lot of people don't wear the face paint on anymore. ICP fans, bring back the fucking face paint, come on. We don't got many things, bring back the face paint. Alright. They had the face paint on, walking around, and they had cops searching everyone like crazy. Um, Biohazard went on, and they played, and it was cool. I didn't know much of their stuff, but still it was cool that I saw them. Then we were standing there and the lights go out and I was tripping out. All you heard was people yelling ICP and then the curtain drops and Shaggy 2 Dope comes out. I was in the front rail, then Violent J comes out and the Fago goes flying. They usually wait one song and then do their intro and then the Fago goes flying. I was, it was so cool. They had 
their setup of Mad Mad Fago. They had three tubs full of it, all full of two liters. ICP went out there and rocked their sets. There were people flying over me from crowd surfers. Then at the end of the show, they had a cop come out, and it looked, I'm pretty sure it was Jump Steady now, looking down down the line. Uh, a fake cop came out, and it looked like they shot Shaggy, and then the whole set changed, which I have not seen ICP ever do that since. The whole set changed, and all you could hear was people chanting ICP. Uh, then the crowd dropped again, and it was just a shot of heaven and the background and then they played the the very last song on the Amazing Jekyll Brothers and they were still throwing Fago and then that's when everybody went for the Fago arm again this is the first time I've seen this they yelled all the true juggalos get on on stage and it was just people pouring over this thing pouring over the rail there if you look this is not the actual ticket but that is the first time I seen the insane clown posse I'm trying to see if there's any other random ICP stuff in here um, this is from the time that we didn't get to go I believe it was the Bizarre and Bizarre tour Lord knows where those two girls are in Albuquerque New Mexico right now and then you got the ringmaster and the river bar the great Malenko right there Mr. Violent J, this looks like it was off of the Bizarre and Bizarre time, and that was when they were in magazines, you know. That was a hell of a time then, because you didn't get to put ICP in magazines. So, they kind of pissed us off with the whole, and that's, uh, you know, the whole when they didn't show up. But, you know, I stayed a fan, trying to see if there's any other moments in here that I need to show you of the ICP times. Um, they're a big influence in my high school times. Uh, not meaning that I was a bad person or anything anymore, but that, you know, that changed it around because I was still um, into the rap just a little bit, but not fully, you know, full on. So ICP kind of gave that rock rap feel. And, uh, ooh, there's a Pantera. I'll have to remember to read that. Ooh, Navy Seals. Um,. I'm not seeing anything else. Oh, here is the picture I was saying earlier about the riddle box. That is the the riddle box. The I wonder if that was my first ICP CD, and that may have changed a lot of shit. Um, so after the sixth, we saw them on the Hell's Pit in Albuquerque, and I believe this is the one that's got Albuquerque in all kinds of trouble which I'll, I'll start talking about that when we get there but the day that Hell's Pit came out I had listened to it and then I had fell asleep and for some reason I woke up and I turned on my CD player and it just automatically started playing the first CD and that song was in there and I remember the first song scaring the shit out of me that I was in my 20s and I didn't sleep that night at all because I was flipped out and that CD was pretty weird because a lot of stuff had came in the team I'm skipping a lot there was Dark Lotus there was Riders in between this stuff there was a lot of CDs in between this time period a lot of stuff went down in the Juggalo world a lot of shit and then so when you came when ICP comes back uh, you know whole bunch had changed. I skipped over I skipped over so much stuff that makes me mad. Um but okay. So that C D came out and we go see them. Me and this is probably the last time I think we might have conned Ryan into going. And I should just make another whole video of the Dark Lotus and the Rider stuff. But so me, Ryan, and Vanessa go, and they're playing this commercial for Hell's Pit on the radio like crazy. This is when I see or when Albuquerque was all about taking stuff to the convention center because it was a huger place. They had Slipknot there, they had Rob Zombie that we saw there, and so ICP's playing there. And we show up, and just from you know 
where we parked were like everybody's acting funky or whatever it seemed like you know kind of you know not as laid back as it usually was i remember fucking people yelling and they were throwing stuff back to the cops and it's been quite a few years so i'm forgetting everything and uh i know some people that might comment and say what what was really going on um i just remember people trying to fight the cops i remember not fighting them, throwing shit at them and i remember people getting you know the pepper spray or something like that i remember i was praying that we got to see icp like i was sitting there on our best behaviors just me ryan and vanessa just chilling there so later on that night my mom had called me or my and i i don't even know we've had to have cell phones something had happened and my dad said he woke up to uh, a concert by the insane clown posse starts a riot and my dad said 100 percent that's all he saw was me in an orange t-shirt and of course that would be the t-shirt that i was wearing that night and so i wish i could see that on the news because that would be awesome that would be awesome to see because that was you know years ago and i never got to see it i just got to hear the second hand from my dad that he heard that and then saw an orange t-shirt and thought it was me and ryan so all that stuff went down and then icp had talked about it on stage and uh i think west side connection or one of those people were opening up mac 10 maybe oh man they, they icp always takes either the juggalo world or someone crazy on tour with them all the time so it was pretty cool. Um, I pretty much I got a, a a Hell's Pit jersey, that one that I said that still smells like Fago from a few months back. Um, ooh, this is the picture of when I beat Nick. I I have to show you that because he'll he'll tell you that he won, but he only got the three count. I'm coming back for you, brother. So. Um, I was just happy that we got to see ICP that day. I got a hockey jersey. I think we had bought a CD from the... They always had a tour CD coming out. I believe we got one that day. Um, I have on one of our VHSs us driving around and listening to um, the radio thing that was like, Juggalos, come on, the Insane Clown Posse does the Hell's Pit tour and all this stuff and giving us the whole uh, blah 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 spew and just getting us pumped up and I wish it was easy to find. I wish that it was easy these days that you just click on something and be like oh that's you know that's my VHS from back in the day. So I'm going to call it there on the Hell's Pit. There's a whole other span that we're at the 33 minutes now that's why i'm going to stop it because i got a whole bunch of stuff i got to remember stuff we didn't talk about we didn't talk about the bazaar and bazaar i got crazy we were working at cripple creek when the bazaar and the bazaar came out um just i got a million icp stories i got a list and probably only touched a few of them of what i really need to do we seen in that time we seen shaggy solo um uh, I talked about the... I didn't miss the whole Lotus. I missed the Miss Metzger trunk full of Fago car full of fat chicks thing. So, once I get more writing up and more jock in my memory, um, I'm going to start going over the little bit that I forgot, and then I'll start from the 6th and on. So, Juggalos, you've always had my back and I always have yours. Don't fiesta too hard. And... Trunk full of Fago. Powerful factions.